past the window of the River Run Bookstore in Portsmouth, and a blast from the past just might stop you in your tracks. Walk inside, and you might catch the familiar sound of a generation gone by. I could have put a dancing mon monkey in the window, and I don't think it would have brought in as many people as the typewriters did. But it wasn't a dancing monkey that was bringing people in. It was the sight of typewriters. We put two or three in the window, and the number of people who came in the store was unbelievable. You could just watch people stop and then turn around and come in, mostly to drag their kid or someone else in and say, I used to have to write papers on this. I had one just like this. Fond memories that can be brought to life with a click and a clack of the keys. I think the same as everybody's. One is the sound. I love the sound. You know, people come in and they'll be browsing and then some kid will come up to the sample machine and start typing and you can just see their eyes like, I haven't heard that sound uh, in so long. It's that nostalgia that prompted Tom Holbrook to start the Portsmouth Typewriter Company. Operating out of the bookstore, Tom fixes manual typewriters of all shapes and sizes. Manuals were made pretty much through the 80s, but anything after like 1965 is, is not very well made. Uh, so most of, um, most of the what I call portables, which are about this size, come with a case. Uh, most of those are 1930 through 1970. And then the other models, uh, what I call the desktop models, although not like a desktop computer, but they're 50, 60 pounds. And um, a lot of those that we get in cell refurbished go back to the 20s. Uh, they're amazing machines, they just keep trucking away. And I've had some as early as 1905 um, that uh, still work great. The repairs are interesting. Most of them are just cleaning up and oiling and putting a new ribbon in. Uh, there's a lot of things that I wish I could fix that would take me so long that it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, the machines were oddly not made to be fixed that well. Sometimes the machine isn't even broken. It's user error. There's other times because a lot of people have found it somewhere where, um, you know, there'll be a carriage lock on or something. And they'll be like, the carriage doesn't move. And I'll go, click. And I'll be like, oh, I just drove an hour. Holbrook had always been a tinkerer, fixing bikes when he was in college. Typewriter repair was almost second nature. So it was very easy for me to start learning uh, how to fix them, which is basically all cause and effect. Uh, it's, it's this connects to this, connects to this, connects to that and a little bit of oiling and a little bit of elbow grease, all of things that I was uh, familiar with. So uh, for the last year or, so or more, I've been doing all the repairs uh, myself, and we also buy them from people and, um, and sell them. Buy them from people like Merrick Solkal, who drove to Portsmouth from Easton, Massachusetts, so Tom could take a look at the typewriter that once belonged to his dad. Well, I brought a Remington Quiet Writer, uh, probably from the mid 1950s. It was uh, the main uh, typewriter in my father's office. He was a doctor, and his secretary used this to type out bills and statements. And probably around the early 1960s, um, they bought a IBM electric, and this went to me. And now it goes to Holbrook, who will clean it and put it up for sale. He says he enjoys the unexpectedness of the work. When someone comes in and says, I have a typewriter, it, there's a sort of Christmas day to it because you don't know what's going to be in the box until you open it up. And sometimes it's uh, nothing you'd ever want. <laughs> uh, sometimes it is a typewriter that is in exactly the same condition as when that box was closed 60 years ago. And you can take it out and put a new ribbon in it and it will work just like it did then. There's something about the tactileness and the sound uh, is just, uh, kids love it. Adults who are buying them, maybe they're writing poems, maybe they're writing letters, maybe they're leaving it out in their house when guests come over so that they can leave a message. It's kind of fun that they are out there in the world and still going. And again, some of them are you know, upwards of 100 years old and still, still working, and that's, 
that's a pretty unique example of longevity and worth that we don't have a whole lot of examples for anymore. Mm -hmm.